I am here to teach you how to write chemical equations. And I'm with my good friend Leo in red. We're all wearing goggles because when you do chemical equations, chemical reactions, you want to be extra careful. All right. I'll sit over here with the mom again. So there are steps. If we walk through these steps, it will make it much easier. So our first step in writing these, remember chemical reactions are transformations. So we're learning how to do transformations, like meditation. All right, reactant formula. What that means, the reactants will be given to you as words. And you need to write the formula. And this means the key here is the subscripts. Now, sometimes there's no subscript. But when do we have subscripts? There's two times. One is the diatomics. Let's walk through them. There are seven diatomics. Seven. They make a seven on the periodic table. You know them. Nitrogen, oxygen, and then the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, are good friends, noble gases. We're not going to see them here. They really don't react. Hydrogen is our seventh one. When they are alone. So when they are alone, we always put two of them together. When they're in a compound, so if it's in a compound, we look at charges. Now, there is an exception to that, of course, which is two nonmetals. So if two nonmetals combine, I will give you the formula like boron trichloride. So I would tell you it's boron with three chlorides. All right. So for our first example, sodium and chlorine. So there's lots of extra words. You just have to find the key part. Sodium, chlorine, underline them. And then we would just write the formula. So sodium and means plus. And then we write chlorine, diatomic. Now notice the diatomics are the nonmetals. There are also tetratomic, which is phosphorus, and sulfur is an octatomic, but we don't need to go there. All right, that's what I mean by showing as we go through this, the lab we're doing this week is this. This is one of the hardest things. This is because it is uniquely chemistry writing chemical equations, but you can all do it. We've built up to this point. We first studied the periodic table. We learned our elements. We understand electrons and protons. So then we gained and lost. And we wrote ions and we put them together in formulas. And now we're just writing sentences. And then you can guess where we're going to go with this. We're going to do the math with it, like we always do. All right, second step of writing the chemical equations is the reaction type. So RxN is just my abbreviation. Can you guys see my tail? I think I'm too short for you to see my tail. All right, there are many types of reactions, many. We're gonna just do five because they're ones that you can do. And we're gonna walk through each of these five. And then the lab will walk through each of the five video to go with that. And then you're going to try it. All right. So as I go through each of them, I'll talk about how you know. So for example, our very first one here is that you typically, you're going to have an element plus an element. So one thing plus another thing. So typically it's going to be a metal plus a non-metal. But we could see non-metal plus non-metal, but it's an element plus an element. And again, as some of you have noticed, all this is in the lab and written out, but it's nice to hear it too. All right, so step three is the key, is we have to write the product formula. Again, these steps are in the lab. Yours truly wrote it, so it's these same words. And this means we respect the subscripts. So what that means, is for this equation, we bring these together. 
Now, remember, when it is just the sodium and the chlorine, sorry, just making sure it's still the halos. Ah! It's going to sing whenever you write the halos. So you can put the halos there. So you remember, they don't have a charge yet. They're going to combine. That's when they get the charges. Now, do not, you can write a note to yourself for the product. Do not bring subscripts over. Do not. You have to create new subscripts. Sometimes they'll be the same, but you are figuring out new subscripts. If you end up with something alone, we look see if it's a diatomic or not. And if we have a compound, this is why the cat was here first to teach you the little kitty cat. Now you get the big cat. Charges. Sodium. Always have your periodic table. Mine's right there. Finally, I get a big giant periodic table. Sodium gets plus one, chlorine gets minus one. We don't need a subscript. So what do we do about that too? Do we just erase it? Can I just put it here? Oh dear. Well, then can I just put that one there? No. No, 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 no. no subscript. Your respect ion charges. Respect the charges. Respect. R A S P E C T. Start singing at home. That's why there's a fourth step. And that is where we balance. That's where my dear friends, the koi fish, come in. They're at home swimming. Um, yeah, and I already told you the story of the koi fish, which actually I did because I'm videotaping this all in reverse order. But this is truly called a coefficient. Just in case you have a different teacher, we balance. So if you like, you can put the little line, if that helps you. When you get to this point, at this point, you do not change the subscripts. We got the subscripts, we're respecting them. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. All right. So we balance by putting the koi fish. Two koi fish there. So, you know, the Dr. Seuss, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. So we have two. You do not put a number in front of the chlorine unless you're special and you're like, no, I'm going to put a one. Leo doesn't care if you put the one there. My little Leo, little baby Leo, he likes to put the one there. So we're okay with it. I do want to mention my son was in my class. Again, he, he liked the one and his teacher marked it wrong. So if you progress on in life with other people, you may have to erase the one. But what was that to say? It's our secret. All right, we're done. There is another step. There's actually a couple more, but we're gonna stop there. But the other step is Leo Gurr wearing dress like Leo and the red ox. Don't forget red. Red's right here. Red didn't want to wear goggles. So Red's going to hang out over here now. Goggles didn't fit him. All right. And then those of you are going to take 221 with me. We actually do several more steps, which is we show states of matter, and then we do net ionics, and there's a whole bunch of other fun stuff. But this is the key of transformation. All right. Let's try them all out, and then we'll do our Leo verse. So there's our steps. And I kept that as our initial reaction because it's how in the first moment the elements they, they were made and then they immediately reacted to gain or lose electrons. So we've been doing combos. We just now are writing them out in a different way than we did when we wrote ionic formulas. All right, hydrogen peroxide. I will give you the formula, sorry, the goggles in Leo space are not working great. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 and it decomposes. So a decomp means there's one reactant. My blue pen, pen is fading. There's one reactant in a combo. 
What's going on with the combo is there's one product. Now online, they often call it a synthesis, but we're calling it a combo in my class. All right, H2O2, you can see it's not right. H2O is the perfect molecule. In H2O2, hydrogen gets the plus one, which means oxygen is a minus one. That's why it's not called hydrogen oxide. It's per oxide. The per tells us the oxidation state is not quite right. And so it reacts. And I tell you, for a decomp, you have one reactant and it breaks apart. And I tell you, it becomes H2O. Whoops. And oxygen. So H2O, I assume you know the formula for water, and oxygen is a diatomic. So we're going to balance. Now, balancing, again, just takes practice. We have, you can do fractions and then make them whole, but I look at this and my problem child is actually the water because I have an odd number here for the oxygen, so I know I'm going to put a 2 there. Theo is all-knowing. That gives me 4 hydrogen, and I put a 2 there. It just takes practice. If it's not working out, start over and start with low numbers. Put a 2 and see what happens. Put a 2 in front and say, okay, I have 4 hydrogen. So I need four hydrogens there, and then I have two times two oxygens, so that's four. And over here, I have two plus two more, and that's four. So I have four and four, and it works out. And, all right, let's do a demo. Leo's ready. This is a fairy tale demo. I can turn it. Hopefully we can have more success. Here's our pumpkin, our neighbor's pumpkin. Leo's going to stay here. He wants to help. So, fairy dust. It's also known as KI. Do you know the secret name? Alright. Really broken. We're going to add a little bit of fairy dust. Okay, Leo. What's going on? We can see. Hopefully, you guys will see in a moment. Can you see? So there was also soap in there. Oh, there we go. We're going to make a mess. Move our pumpkin closer. So our pumpkin's filled with soap. And he's going to just keep going. This is called the Olsen toothpaste. Um, oh, dear. I should move the pumpkin to the sink. I forgot to put a plate under him. But he just keeps going and going. Oxidation reductions. So. The Ki, the fairy dust, is something known as a catalyst. Hydrogen peroxide wasn't stable. It just needs a little kick. A fairy dust, Ki, to get it going. And then it keeps going and going and going. I did not, we asked the neighbor if we could have the pumpkin. She was just going to compost it. So normally, we get a whole bunch of pumpkins. We do lots of fun demos. Maybe you can do a pumpkin demo at home with your pumpkin. Take a video and send it to me for an extra credit point. I see why we're having problems. Because my goggles aren't lined up over my nose. All right. Combustion. Combustion is burning. So we're going to burn ethanol. Let's just do the demo. And then we'll do the reaction. Because the demo is cool. And then we can keep watching. Let's see. He's got a lot going on back here. You see, he's got like this long mohawk thing going on back behind. He's done reacting. All right. So somebody left this at my house. Didn't actually know what it was. But this this really scared me. This left like many years ago. It's been sitting there, and I just thought I'll use it for this demo. See all that stuff? That's all the sugar that's in this crap. So the alcohol doesn't kill your liver, all that sugar will. All right. Leo's like, mm. We are going to normally, here's a demo you can do a picture of. Gotta keep your goggles on, Leo. The video's gonna go off again. If you 
want to do this at home. If there's alcohol lying around, don't drink it. Put in a shot glass. Take, if you're really brave, a $20 bill. I don't walk around with my wallet, and so I didn't have a dollar bill. So we're going to try it with the, cheap, with the uh, Dorito. And put it in the alcohol. And then burn it. It burns, but it doesn't burn the dollar bill. Oh, Leo, you gotta sit down. Because I need multiple hands. Alright. So, there's our Bunsen burner. That's methane burning! But there we go. The Cheeto is much more dramatic. Oh, there we go. Isn't that exciting? Can you see it? I can't. There we go. Ethanol burning. Cheeto pretty much burns on its own. Should we throw it in there? Oh, look at that. All the grease on there. But the alcohol, the utility, the sugar, all that grease through. Despite my life. Let's turn off our combustion. So that's combustion burning. We'll let it keep going. Oh, it might make a terrible smell in here. Oh well. Is it May's birthday? We sing happy birthday. Happy birthday. Leo! Is it your birthday? Oh no. Leo would have been August. So red the bull? Oh, red the ox is a Taurus. Do we have any Scorpios here? Happy birthday. I can't blow it. We can hear the sizzle. All right, let's get back. So, you can video tape yourself doing a demo. Then you have to write out the reaction. So, the dollar bill doesn't burn because uh, they use tequila or vodka, half of it's water. And so it just soaks it. Um, but anyway, that was ethanol burning. So, let's go do the reaction. I will give you the formula. So, ethanol is C2H5. Sorry, H6. Oh. And it burns, which means more oxygen. Combustion always means plus oxygen. So, oxygen is saying that carbon, that hydrogen, they can take up more. There's only one of me there. What's driving this? Oxygen has a halo. Ah! Alright, carbon and oxygen, when they combine, they make the perfect carbon-oxygen combo. Oxygen gets to be a negative 2 now. And the carbon, its oxidation state is a plus 4. We'll go back and do oxidation states over there. But you're always going to end up with CO2. And hydrogen and oxygen, anybody want to guess? Oh, Leo says, it's water! Dihydrogen monoxide. Again, perfect molecule. Because oxygen is negative two, and the hydrogen is a plus one. You don't have to do this stuff with oxidation numbers. We'll do that at the end. All right, we do want to balance though. Combustions are your favorite because it just means plus O2, and you always end with CO2 and H2O. Unless it doesn't work right, and then you get free radicals. Like in our body, you get free radicals. All right. When things don't work right. And then we have enzymes, or we eat pumpkins. So, you can, for balancing, as I said, make a little chart, but that takes time. In combustion, we start with the carbon. So we have two carbons. All the carbon became CO2. We put a two there. And then we do hydrogen. So we're just going left to right. There's six hydrogen, so over here, how many waters? Three, because three times two. And now we have to do the oxygen. So sometimes it can be helpful to write the O and to count each side. So the trick with the oxygen is now you go backwards, because we have a lot of oxygen on the product side. We have two times two, which is four, plus three more. So that subscript two is only with the hydrogen. We need three more. So we have seven. 
Over here, I have one, and to get to seven, I'll need one plus six more. So, I'll need three in front of the O2. And there's no number. This would be a three. And if you want, you can put a one, or you can leave a blank in front of the decimal. If you do it and it doesn't work out, just erase your koi fish and start over with the two. All right. The singles and the doubles. These are our exchange reactions. So there's going to be a compound to start with. A single is called a single because you have an element plus a compound. So you're going to see an element plus a compound. And we're going to end up with a different element and a different compound. So it's a replacement. There's an exchange. We don't want to put three things together. We don't want a zinc, copper, chloride. We haven't done anything with that. Don't start doing that. So the reaction, I don't know what I did. Oh, there it is. I have some copper two chloride. I have a blue. Remember that? Oh, is that copper? Yeah. And a piece of zinc. I'm going to plop it in there. And oh, something's happening. You can see there's this brownish stuff starting to form. Let's write the reaction, then we'll come back and look at it. All right. Uh, we're using, hopefully, the red. So zinc by itself gets a halo. Hello! It's wonderful because nobody's here. It's empty. It's almost like singing in the shower. All right. Plus copper chloride. Copper two. The two means plus two. Chloride is a minus one from the periodic table, so chloride does get a two subscript. All right, so again, we're not crunching three things together. Everything's binary, just two. We also have never put metals together, so don't do that. So the metals switch places. They do a replacement or an exchange, whatever word you like. So the copper is now by itself. And the zinc is with the chloride. Now, I try to give you ones in which you're working with the fixed charge ones. If you run into a transition metal and I don't tell you the charge, you can always ask. Or you can, it's almost always a two. Almost always. All right. So this one's balanced. All right, let's keep going. Definitely Leo Gur. The last one. Sodium carbonate. It's called a double because they each have a partner. Everybody's double, double, double. So what happens? We first do our subscripts, which we get from the charges. No one's alone, no halos. So the carbonate, the eight is a polyatomic. Learn. This is why we did this. You know how to do this. This is why we spent so much time getting subscript. This is where the parentheses can really help students. The carbonate is just carbonate. Sulfuric acid means we have a hydrogen. Now remember, this is truly molecular, but we think of it like ionic to keep our slides simple. An ick. That was eight. So it's a negative two. So we need two hydrogens to balance the sulfate. All right, it's a double. They each have a partner. They come into the mix. I call it the swingers. They get into the party and they say bye-bye to their partner. And now they hear that Leo. They find a new partner. All right, I closed Leo's ears on that one. So we come over here and we just bring the sodium over. We do not bring its subscript over. We just bring the sodium, we bring its charge, and it dumped carbonate. And it's just cruising around looking for a new partner. Well, it's a cation, and there is another anion. So polyatomics, when they exchange, they stay as a polyatomic. 
they keep their charge. We get our subscript. I like to do my subscripts as I go along. It's just my thing. Some students will exchange and then they do their subscripts. All right, now we go back. So the first one always goes with the last one. The middles come together. Now, don't write this down. This is what students do. And that's wrong. Cat ion first. And we just bring one hydrogen and the carbonate. And you don't have to do parentheses, but they're helpful. All right. Oh, look at that. It's going to be balanced. Let's do it. You ready? We have two sodiums. We have one carbonate. See the polyatomic as a whole. The only time that doesn't work is a decomp. Because in the decomp, they break apart. Everything changes. We have two hydrogens, and we have one as one more. So we're good. Now, let's do it. This is like, every, oh wow, this might blow up. Hopefully it doesn't. He was covering his ears. So there was sodium carbonate was in the balloon. It was a solid. And sulfuric acid was down here. And when the acid and that is a type of base combined. And you can see our balloon has a little face. And our balloon blew up. It was really fast. I was not expecting it that fast. I do this with the kids with baking soda and vinegar. Vinegar is a weak acid. So it doesn't go quite that fast. Got a little worried for my little Leo. All right, there was something I wanted to do with this one, and now I don't remember. Oh, doubles, doubles. Doubles are awesome. Doubles are never, ever redox, because that's what we're gonna do now. So, if you have blanks to fill in, you leave them blank. You draw redox. It's not a redox. There's no Leo. There's no GER. There's no oxidizing agent. There's no reducing agent. We're done. It's why doubles are everyone's favorite. You're switching partners. I think they're also your favorite because we've already, we're on our fifth reaction. You start getting the hang of it. All right, let's do Leo GER with the others. The teacher can't see through her mask. Oh, I can take my goggles off now. All right, Leo, you can take your goggles off until we clean up. I'm going to erase a little bit so I have more room. Oh, you guys can see down there. Let's just do it down here. So we know all of these are Leo Gers. And the reason we know that is because we have zeros. In the first one, if we have a halo, <laughs> um, you have to do Leo Ger. So sodium had its electron, and now it's plus one, it lost. And chlorine gained. You've been doing this. We just didn't have the fancy name. We started by calling it, you know, whatever. Gaining and losing, cation, anion, the little cat. All right. Uh, here, our halo is oxygen. Ah! And in the water, hydrogen is still a plus one. Now, this one's an interesting one. I just did it because my neighbor gave me the pumpkin. It's an interesting one because... know that we'll see this example again. I just love the demo. Is oxygen was both oxidized and reduced. It does happen in your car battery. If unless you drive a hybrid. Um, but the lead storage batteries, the lead goes both through oxidation reduction. Again, I don't know that that's gonna happen again, but it was a cool demo. Alright, combustions are definitely Leo Gers. Combustions and singles are always Leo Gers. Always. Doubles are never. Can't see that. I put a little note over there. I just put a little star. Combos and decomps, usually. If you see the halo, you're going for it. They're not always. In this class, we'll probably see them always. The other thing I want to mention, not every reaction falls into these five. These are five that you, as beginning chemistry students, can easily write and say, wow, look at me. Because yes, we should be, wow. All right, 
right, oxygen's going from a zero to a negative two, so it's gaining. Zero, negative two means a gain. You can also do, if the oxidation number decreased as you're moving forward, it's oxidized. If we go back over here, we're gonna do oxidation numbers here. Oxygen's negative two, hydrogen's plus one. So some of the oxygen, this is part of the problem with ethanol in our cars, why a lot of people will pay extra for the ethanol free gas, is this is already partially reacted with the oxygen. So you don't get as much bang for your buck. In fact, the big, 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 big stuff, like airplanes and stuff, they have to have pure hydrocarbons and then let it burn. Burn, baby, burn. All right, let's do it. Oxygen's negative two. Six hydrogens gives us a plus six. We have to make our mass equal to zero. So missing number is a negative four. We divide by the two carbons. Takes practice. Negative four divided by two is negative two. It is not its charge. It is its oxidation state. It's the change in the oxidation state, the oxidation potential that tells us how far, how much chemistry, how much heat you get out of it. So the carbon loses electrons. Its oxidation number increased, going from a negative two to a plus four. So some students see it with the losing and gaining, and some students need to do the arrows. So again, Leo, Here's our black. Leo stands for oxidized, lost electrons, and Ger stands for reduced because it gained electrons. So as you're moving forward in the reaction, something's always losing, something's always gaining. All right, let's do our Leo Ger on this one. And the last one, we don't have to do it. So you'd leave blanks or you draw a picture. Do not write N-A, do not, because N-A is sodium, and then I'm like, why did they write sodium? All right, find your halo, what happened? Zinc went from a zero to a plus two, zinc lost. Or the oxidation number went up, same thing. And what gained? Our other single, lighter halo. <laughs> All right, let's do the other half. The key of this page was to show you there's a lab video where we walk through it again. It's a tough lab, but you guys, you're brilliant. You know how to do this. You've been doing the work. We're just building, building, building. Got it. You've got great study skills now. So let's do the OA and the RA. And again, I always do this this way to be consistent. I always write the OA on top and then the RA. And then I always crisscross. I always write the Leo Gur before Leo Gur. I'm going to write the OARA after. The OARA are always products. Sorry, didn't mean that. <laughs> They're always reactants. So chlorine was my GER, it's now my OA. As a reactant, it is Cl2. So you do show the subscripts here. If you showed it here, I don't care. Sodium is my reducing agent. Some of you might have to watch this again, do this whole page again, get the hang of it, or just move on and see what you can do. That's why we have homework. That's why we have the lab. That's why I have so many office hours. Just, just come to office hours. And dress up like a lion. Or, oh, I promised Red he could help us with the OAs and RAs. So, Decompositions are interesting. It's how this started out. The oxygen started out as the peroxide H2O2. So in a decomp, because you only have one reactant, it's a double agent. It's both the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Kind of cool. All right. All the terminology came from this, the combustion. Oxygen is a reactant. It is the oxidizing agent. It's where they got all the terminology from. Then they realized other stuff could be, and we expanded to Leo Ger. And Leo's so happy. All right, my reducing agent is not carbon. It is 
the ethanol, so C2H6O. So when I did this on the board, I wrote it um, the easiest way for me to help you not freak out. So if you Google ethanol, they often write as C2H5OH. Those of you take Chem 105 with me, that's how we'll write it, and it won't be so scary. All right, let's do one more. Because there's no oxidizing agent or reducing agent for a double. Because they're never, ever redox. So copper is not my oxidizing agent. What is my oxidizing agent? It is how the copper began as copper chloride. And the zinc, the zinc is my reducing agent. Because it started as zinc. And speaking of that, let's see how our demo went. We might need little tweezers. There we go. So, I don't know. Well, you can see underneath. See all that copper that's formed on there? Yeah, we don't need the tweezers, maybe, if we pull it out with the tweezers. Nope, the tweezers don't fit in this little container. Okay, many blessings. Bye-bye. Oh, we wanted to do one more demo. You ready? It's a demo that didn't work the very first day. All right. When you do the lab, this is a decomp. So, I gotta turn you so you can see what I'm gonna do since I have it here. So, all I'm doing heating up the potassium chlorate. I can get closer. Heating it quite a bit. Kind of goggles. Anybody else's goggles? Here they are. We're heating it until it melts. And there we go. Now we have to heat the other one. This is the double Bunsen burners. Doolin Bunsen burners. You're very patient. In class, you'd have no no choice. It's almost there. It's melting. It's really not that exciting seeing something melt. But the rest of the demo, it'll be worth the wait. All right, we got them both molten. You turn lights off. All right, hopefully it works. Oh, where's that spot? <laughs> So the purple is potassium. Those electrons are so excited. And the orange is the sodium. The orange is yellow. And the gummy bear, well, this was a decomp. The gummy bear may rest in peace. Thank you. Happy Halloween. A little bit late. I'm so happy.